Hey, how's it going guys? Phil here, and this is a review for the 2021 ASUS Top Dash F15 gaming laptop. Thank you to Best Buy for sending me this laptop for free to try. You'll receive the laptop, 200 watt power brick with 6 foot cable, 3 foot power cable, and a quick start booklet showing you how to charge and power it on. The laptop measures 14 inches wide, 10 inches long, and 3 quarters of an inch thick. It weighs just under 5 pounds. The exterior of the unit is a lightweight but durable plastic, and there's a cutout at the base of the lid so you can see the status LEDs when the screen is closed. The shell has a matte finish and prominent branding on the right side, as well as a small tough logo printed in the front left corner. At the left hand side, you'll find the barrel style power port, ethernet port, HDMI 2.0B port, USB-A 3.2 port, USB-C Thunderbolt 4 port, and combo mic headphone port. On the right hand side are two additional USB-A 3.2 ports, heat exhaust vent, and Kensington lock slot at the back corner. On the bottom are intake air vents and rubber feet that raise the laptop off your desk surface to ensure stability and airflow. The lid's front has a recessed notch in the middle that makes it easy to lift and open up the screen. This laptop uses a 1080p IPS level panel with 15.6 inch diagonal, anti-glare matte coating, and 144Hz max refresh rate. As you can see, the bezels are razor thin at the top and sides, but there is no integrated webcam at the top. The 10 keyless keyboard is backlit with highlighted WASD keys, and in the lower right is a set of half-size arrow keys. To the keyboard's upper left are volume adjustment keys, mic mute, and armory crate button for launching ASUS's mobile gaming hub. The power button is located in the upper right hand corner, and the status LEDs along the back are for power, charging, and hard disk activity. Below the keyboard is a 4 x 3 inch mouse trackpad. When powering on the laptop, you'll notice that the keyboard lights up and glows a minty green. The LEDs are not RGB, and this is the only color it can display, but they do a nice job allowing you to see the keys in the dark. The backlight turns off automatically after one minute of inactivity, but lights up again if you press any key or use the mouse. You can adjust its brightness to three levels, or shut off the backlight using the secondary function on the F keys. The first time you start up the machine, you'll need to complete Windows Setup, which takes about 10 minutes. Interestingly, you can complete this using the mouse and keyboard or via voice responses. Use your voice or the keyboard along the way, and if you'd like me to stay quiet, just select the little microphone icon towards the bottom of your screen. You'll notice that the integrated speakers located on the underside of the laptop at the front corners are actually decent sounding, though most folks will probably want to use external speakers or headphones for better performance. When connecting to your home network, you'll find that it supports Wi-Fi 6 for more bandwidth, meaning faster downloads, less buffering, and reduced server lag, provided you have a compatible router or network. Spec-wise, this build runs on the Intel Quad-Core i7-11370H 3.3GHz processor. The discrete GPU is an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3060 with 6GB of GDDR6 RAM. It comes with 16GB of RAM pre-installed, consisting of one replaceable 8GB SODIMM RAM stick and an additional 8GB soldered on the motherboard, which will run in dual channel. My build has a 512GB M.2 SSD pre-installed, but you can upgrade or add a second M.2 NVMe SSD inside. You can also upgrade the RAM to 32GB total max, but to do that you'll need to remove the entire bottom panel of the case to access the internal components, and I'll have a link in the info bubble above on how to do that. If you set the laptop to the silent profile, this will reduce its power consumption and use of the fans, making it super quiet. However, switching to performance or turbo modes runs the fans at full speed, which you'll hear are loud enough to drown out the onboard speaker's output. Performance-wise, the native display panel can sometimes produce slightly smeary visuals at high frame rates in fast-paced FPS games like Counter-Strike and Warframe, and that's due to its 18 millisecond response time, sluggish by today's standards. Though thankfully, there's little tearing and stuttering apparent thanks to its adaptive sync capabilities. 
The cinematic experience on the native display is also so-so, with muted, undersaturated color, since the panel only outputs 62.5% of the sRGB color space, which isn't the greatest for creative work or content creation, where you may need more accurate colors. However, if you plan on hooking up a secondary display via the HDMI port with this laptop, that might not be a big issue. When using the trackpad, note that the left and right mouse keys are embedded in the bottom. While it looks nice as a single smooth surface, it can be tricky to determine the separation between the keys. But you can also execute multi-finger gesture commands on it to perform actions like switching or minimizing windows. I liked that the Thunderbolt 4 USB-C port is multi-purpose, for connecting peripherals, charging mobile devices, and it can even be used for power delivery charging of the laptop itself as well as DisplayPort Alt Mode output. When using the combo headphone jack, you can connect the headset with a mic and enable two-way AI noise cancellation in the Armory Crate app for clear, noise-free chat and in-game audio. Also, when typing on the keyboard, the keys are fairly quiet and have good tactile feedback and responsiveness. Outside of gaming, the laptop does a great job with productivity apps and casual use like web browsing. Battery life varies, though if you keep it in battery saver or silent mode, you can expect between 3 and 6 hours of use. In performance mode, you'll likely get a little under 2 hours on a full charge. Overall, as a gaming-oriented laptop, it's got all the specs and power to run most AAA titles in high or ultra settings and will perform just fine. It's light enough for travel and daily use, both for work and play, though the lackluster display ends up looking a bit washed out and doesn't produce the best visuals. However, that can be mitigated by simply docking to an external display where you'll use it the most. While you don't get some of the nice-to-have extras like RGB backlighting on the keyboard or an integrated webcam, you can still upgrade the RAM and storage or add onto your setup with external peripherals. I hope you enjoyed this review. You can ask me any questions in the comments. I'll put a link to the product in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and join me next time.